This is Selma Schimmel, and you are looking live at the great city of Chicago, which is once again playing host to the American Society of Clinical Oncology, ASCO. This is ASCO's 49th annual meeting, and this year's theme could not be more appropriate, Building Bridges to Conquer Cancer. More than 30,000 of the world's foremost cancer specialists are here, and so is Voice for Life, making our 15th appearance at ASCO and one of our very best. Joining me now is Gloria Borges, who is the founder and executive director of the Wonder Glow Foundation and the Wonder Project. Hello, Gloria. How's it going? It's going okay. Today we're going to feature you, talk about your own story, and how you are taking your cancer experience and becoming very proactive and using it to inspire others with your activities. Thank you so much. And it's uh, my pleasure to be here, my pleasure to share my story. And you know, we share something in common. I was a young adult in my 20s when I got diagnosed with breast cancer, started Vital Options as the first organization for young adults with cancer. I was a student on a different life course. You're an attorney, mm -hmm. and suddenly this happens, and who could have imagined that it would divert you to a different life course, but cancer has a way of doing that. From the moment I was diagnosed, I was never afraid, uh, I was never sad, I was never angry. I took it in stride and sort of felt like, you know, okay, this is where my life is supposed to go. I've always felt that it was my job to lead and to help people, and so when I was diagnosed, I saw this as an opportunity to <clears throat> not only show people what I could do and what, what I was made of and that I could beat this disease. Let's talk a little bit about your diagnosis, how you came to be diagnosed, and your work isn't only going to impact younger people who get diagnosed mm -hmm. with colon and colorectal cancer, but people of all ages dealing with this disease. My diagnosis came uh, September 19, 2010. I was 28 years old. Um, <clears throat> I had experienced some GI issues throughout the year, uh, frequent trips to the bathroom and unimpressive trips to the bathroom um, and bloating and stuff like that. And it actually started probably in January of 2010. That's when I started becoming noticeable. And I, it, it coincided with me joining a new gym. And the gym was <clears throat> had this diet regimen that they put me on that had me eating a pound of red meat a day, <clears throat> which was kind of a death wish for someone who already had colon cancer, and I didn't know, obviously. And so it was a really weird, high-fat, high-protein diet. I was doing weight training. I had lost 30, in five months, I had lost 30 pounds. I had put on 10 pounds of muscle. So I was extremely fit, but I was having all of these GI issues, and I sort of wrote them off. I went and saw my, my general practitioner uh, in July, of 2010 and I told her look I'm going to the bathroom six times a day and it's never pretty and I'm bloated and you know look at my belly and and th these are the issues and she said I think you just need probiotics mm -hmm. and I said okay you know I was happy to hear that uh, I was I had kind of fooled myself into not taking my symptoms seriously and so I, I wrote it off and did probiotics and my symptoms continued to get worse the bloating would happen earlier in the day, the bloating would be um, <clears throat> would be accompanied with kind of gas pains, things like that. And so things were getting worse, I could tell. And I remember calling her back and saying, look, I need the number of a GI do a doctor. And I called the GI doctor and I said, I need an appointment. And they said, September 21st. And I called my husband and that was the only moment of this entire saga with colon cancer that I was nervous. I called him and I said, that's gonna be too late. And it was. Uh, I had emergency surgery on September 19th uh, because my the tumor in my colon had grown so large to create a complete intestinal blockage. So it was definitely too late to go see a GI doctor at that point. It isn't natural for a young adult to even think about yeah. that this could be serious. The medical team, you know, here I am, we're, we're years apart in our experience, mm -hmm. but that sense of, don't worry about it. Right. And it happens across disease types. And the goal here too is to inspire young adults that they can, they're not invincible, and they're not impervious to this. Yeah. And 
that young adults do get cancer and they're the ones that have to work really hard at being heard and listening to their bodies talk to them and yeah. considering, you know, it may not be anything serious, but it really could be. Right. So one, one story that I think is really remarkable since I started my blog and, and everything else, you know, people who were in my life, um, maybe not super close friends, but people I went to college with or grade school with, you know, they've followed along. I have a big army of supporters. And I found out from four of those people, four women, ages 28, 30, 31, and 32, they never would have known the entire saga had I not started the blog. It's not like we were super close. Um, but they followed along and they were all having GI issues for various reasons. Uh, they're all, again, very young. And they told their doctors, look, I have a friend who was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer at the age of 28, I wanna call an oscopy. And they pushed their doctors to get that test. All four of them had precancerous polyps and no, no real family history. One of them was pregnant, so the doctor was like, oh, the hemorrhoids are from that, and another one was having GI issues. Oh, but you're gluten intolerant, but they all pushed because of my example, and they all had to be advocates for themselves, and had they not been, they would have had colon cancer down the line. So, you know, that, that absolutely rings true. You have to be your own advocate, and you have to be pushy. And, um, and luckily they have a great example to say, look, she was 28, stage four, and that pushed their doctors to say, all right, you'll get a colonoscopy. How does a young adult get colon cancer? That's a mystery for us, why, why I got the disease. I don't, we've run almost every genetic test under the sun and there is no family history, there's no predisposition. And so, you know, I like to tell Dr. Lenz it was just meant to be so we could be teammates and we could partner up and and change the face of cancer research because, you know, it takes a pretty audacious person to do the things that I've done to, to look surgeons in the face and say, oh, that's how long you think I'm gonna live? Well, we'll see about that. You know, I mean, it takes, it takes an audacious person to go through all of this with that kind of confidence and with that kind of positivity to say, not only am I gonna live, I want to change things so more people can live. And so, you know, in a strange way, I feel like it was supposed to happen because I was a certain person before my diagnosis, extremely confident and successful. And so when I got that diagnosis, you know, it didn't phase me. It seemed to me to be another challenge. And I had conquered so many things throughout my life that I felt like, okay, this is the biggest fist fight of my life and I'm ready to fight. So where are you in your clinical life now? I just completed my 51st round of chemo, um, still in treatment. Uh, I've had, to date, three surgeries, 10 rounds of radiation, and 51 rounds of chemo. And I've been pretty much on, in treatment for a little over two and a half years. I had a four month break in 2011, but for the most part, I've been, I've been in, in, the, in the battle. Gloria Borges, founder and executive director of the Wonder Glow Foundation and the Wonder Project, the ultimate colon cancer survivor hmm. and vital options advocate in action here at the 49th annual ASCO meeting in Chicago. Thanks so much. Thank you, Gloria.